Greetings everyone. Today we have Dr. Lauren Youngman, who is the recipient of the FIP's Distinguished Pharmaceutical Education Award. This is a new FIP award and it recognizes an outstanding mid-career educator who has made significant contributions in the field of pharmaceutical education, but not only that, but has also made an impact in pharmacy practice. Dr. Lauren has been named as the first recipient ever of this award. Congratulations, Dr. Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. We are happy to have <laughs> you too. What has led you to become an educator? Um, I, I will say, so for folks that are, that are educators out there, the reason why I thought about being um, a a faculty member was because I had a faculty member who mentioned it to me okay. when I was a student. So I'd given a talk um, at, at the, like my senior seminar and my instructor had said at the end, you should think about teaching and I hadn't thought about it before. But then during my postgraduate training, I had the opportunity to mentor students and to mentor other trainees mm -hmm. in, med in medicine and I really loved the idea of being able to guide folks to become who they wanted to be and what our patients need them to be. And so I was really excited about the opportunity to, um, to mentor people and to be able to think, to kind of push folks to think about contextual factors and how we best meet the needs of people. So, yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. In 2019, Dr. Lauren became a visiting professor from the University of Namibia. Mm -hmm. And then thereafter, she became an associate professor from the University of Pittsburgh. Dr. Lauren, how do you compare the two settings in terms of pharmaceutical education? Mm. That's a great question. So I think, so I will say that at least from my experience working in these two settings, that the core of what pharmacy education is is the same everywhere, right? Our focus is on training professionals who are gonna be able to go out and improve the health of their communities and improve the health of patients. And so that's the same in both places. I think the biggest kind of differences for me are like one is just based on numbers. So the U.S. Is, has many pharmacy schools, lots of pharmacy folks that are graduating, and it's been you know you know hundreds of you know or tens and decades and decades of pharmacy education. Versus in Namibia, the um, the School of Pharmacy at the University of Namibia. This is the first pharmacy school in in Namibia, um, and just graduated the first class in 2015. So it's very different thinking about like when, where you're starting with and, and you've got you know, very few pharmacists and, and not initially none that were trained locally. And so now kind of shifting to think about how, how do we best meet the needs of Namibians versus in, in the US because it's exist, like the schools have existed for a long time. There's not, it's not, I don't know, it's not, there's not as much, there's a lot of new things, but there's not as much flexibility and there's not as much like a need to just say like what's best right now what do we need to do right now so yeah. that's why I love working in Namibia that's great yeah and in terms of your goals what are your goals mm -hmm. for the pharmacy curricula at the university yeah. and what are the challenges that you have experienced with that or that you foresee with that yeah so when I think of curricula I'm thinking both of our B farm program and um, we are just going through a curriculum transformation. And so we have new students in this new curriculum. And that new curriculum has been designed to have even more um, hands-on experiences for students, which I think is, is exactly what's needed. So that we have folks that finish, finish school and can immediately jump into taking care of patients and, and will be kind of exceptional pharmacists as they start their internship. Um, the other program that I'm involved with is our Masters of Pharmacy and Clinical Pharmacy. And so that we're doing also curriculum transformation. We'll be starting the new program, not this January, but the next January. And that is gonna be a huge transformation because we will be having pharmacists placed during their masters um, in a hospital setting where they're gonna be clinical pharmacists practicing. And so the hope and the goal is that those folks then will be, um, will have a lot of kind of mentored support in very, like a contextually rich environment. So then we'll start to see 
um, the implementation of clinical pharmacy services across the country when they, when they finish and they go back to their hospitals or they go back to their communities. Yeah. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah. Um, challenges, I think, I don't think this is unique in Namibia, but one of the big challenges is just people. Um, so there are only so many people and trying to make sure that you're able to provide an, the, all the supportive services and all these things with you know, a really small staff is challenging, but um, my colleagues are amazing. I have, there's a couple of colleagues from UNAM that are here at the conference okay. and working with them has been um, super transformational for me to see people early in their career who are passionate about change and want to see what's best for you know pharmacists and for Namibians and so it's been it's just yeah it's really fun so we're small but mighty yeah definitely um but yeah so yeah that's a that's a lovely thing to look forward to we will mm -hmm. keep our eyes on that as well yes and um dr lauren has coordinated global health experiences if you don't mind can you tell us a bit about the benefits of these global health experiences yeah um so so the first is when I think of what global health is, like I think we often, especially coming from like the US, a lot of folks will see global health as being something that happens somewhere else. Mm. So like you have to go to like a low income country and work like, and that's what global health is. Mm. But for me, like the, the view is that global health is about addressing health equity and about addressing um, health needs that, ha that influence, uh, that exist in multiple different places. So when I was in Pittsburgh, I worked at a free clinic and working with folks with um, um, not very low incomes, like other, cha other kind of structural challenges like documentation status and language and all these other things. And so a lot of my training for folks in global health was in that setting. So was working within the communities where they are, where, where students are, and being able to see those things happening anywhere. Um, in terms of kind of international experiences, uh, I, for students, I feel like the, the truth is that the benefit is mostly for the student that participates. <laughs> but it can, I think for that student, it can change their view of the world. They can become less kind of, um, um, I don't know, like na um, like nationalistic or very like um, for like Americans, like very like, you know, US centric views mm -hmm. and realize that there are lots of ways to do things and that there are benefits to doing things differently. And there's value in that. Um, and then I think the other thing that I've noticed about students that have come, you know, US students have come to Namibia is they come back with um, I ideas for how to improve health in the U.S. from what they've learned in Namibia. Mm. So I think that, um, you know, I think for anybody it's helpful to have experiences in other places to be able to be more kind of globally aware and to be able to, yeah, to be able to experience other things. The other thing that I've noticed for myself, so I took care of a lot of folks, um, a lot of immigrants, and when I mention something about, like, I know where they're from and I've been to that place or I've worked in that place, it changes people's relationship to you. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, no, you actually get it. True. You've been there, like you see, like, and, and so it actually helps to build those relationships with your patients. So mm -hmm. that's kind of another benefit. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And lastly, mm -hmm. Dr. Laurid is an active member of the FIP's academic section. Mm -hmm. How has the membership um, supported you in terms of your work so far? Yeah. Okay, so the biggest thing, so my very first FIP Congress was in 2014 in Thailand. And I went to that conference um, trying to think about like, are there folks that we might be able to partner with and, and collaborate with internationally? And so I met the former dean of the School of Pharmacy, Tim Rennie, um, at UNAM, and he was speaking about the new School of Pharmacy and their vision for pharmacists taking roles as clinicians. And as I'm hearing him say that, it, ma it matched exactly with what my thought of what is possible and what needs, what's best for people. Mm -hmm. And so I went up and talked to him afterwards and that's why I ended up being involved in Namibia and why ultimately now I'm a full-time staff member there. So if it wasn't for FIP and this like relationship with people in other places, I think, I mean, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. So mm -hmm. I'm very thankful for my involvement in FIP. 
Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Lauren. Yeah. And signing out from the FIP 2024 Congress at the CTICC Cape Town, South Africa, my name is Candida Nepawe.